In this video, we're going to talk about functions that have parameters, passing arguments into those functions, and we're going to talk a little bit more about return values. So let's create a function that is going to calculate the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I'll just call this calculate hypotenuse. And when we're done, we're going to have this function return a double. So that would be a decimal. We've talked about this a little bit before. So we're going to have it return a, a decimal value. So the function is going to spit out an answer that will be the hypotenuse of the triangle that, that the, the user wants to, to calculate. So you can see that Swift is pretty mad at me right now because I haven't returned anything. So I'm just going to return the hypotenuse. Now it's going to get mad at me. It's going to say, well, what is hypotenuse? And the reason it doesn't like hypotenuse is because we haven't declared that variable yet. But we will. So it's just mad at me. We're doing too many things. So we're saying we're going to calculate the hypotenuse in this function. What we'll be spitting out is a decimal value because most hypotenuse are a decimal. When we're done, we're going to spit out the actual hypotenuse that we've created. Okay, so that is return. Is We're going to say this is the result so that when somebody calls the function, the hypotenuse will be what is given to them. Okay, so what we're going to do now is talk about passing in values to this function so that we can use the function to make the calculations we need. So in Python, what we would do is we would say, oh, let's just pass in A and B. So the one side of a, hypoten or of a triangle is A, the other side is B. But Swift is a little bit more picky about this. Swift likes to know, OK, so I'm taking A and B, but what am I expecting? What kind of variable should I expect? And I'm going to expect A to be a double and B to be a double as well. So Swift is a little bit more picky about what kind of variable are we expecting to be passed in. And I want these to both be doubles or decimals. Now, the way Swift works is a little bit different. If I put this underscore in front of the A and an underscore in front of the B, that's going to help us call the function a little bit easier. So for example, if I didn't put the underscore, let me just show you what that looks like. If I did not put the underscore, I would have to say, let's call calculate hype. Let's spell it correctly. And I'm going to have to pass in a, which would be some value of 5.2. And I would have to pass in b, which would be some value of 3.4. OK, but I'm not going to actually, I don't want to have to write A and B every time because I don't want to have to know what those variables are. So by putting an underscore here for A and an underscore here for B, oops, I need a space. It's going to get mad. If I put an underscore in front of A and an underscore in front of B, what that allows me to do then is when I call the calculate height, all I have to put in are numbers without having to say, what was the variable name? I'm just going to pass in 3.4 and 5.2. Now it's saying it's unused because we're calling it, but we're not doing anything with it. And that's totally fine. I just want to show you the difference. If we put an underscore, then we don't have to say A is 3.4, B is 5.2. With the underscore, I can just say, pass in 3.4. We'll automatically assign it to A, pass in 5.2. OK, we'll come back to this in a minute. Let's do some calculations. Let's find the hypotenuse. So let's first do some squaring of these. So we're going to say let um, squared equal. And we're going to take the power of a, and it will be to the power of 2. So that's a squared plus we're going to take the power, and that'll be b squared. In order to find exponents like this, a and B must be doubles. That's a requirement of Swift. OK, now I'm just going to find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say let hypotenuse equal the square root of squared. 
Everything should be happy now. Let's let it... No anger now. Like, okay, finally, you've defined a function with everything I need. We're going to pass in an A value. We're going to pass in a B value. We'll square those and add them. Take the square root and then spit out the hypotenuse. So if I print the result of calculating the hypotenuse with the passing in 3 and 4 as A and B. Okay, let's try that. Let's see what happens. We should get 5. And we have to take a moment for it to build because 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. The square root of that is 5. Beautiful. I can even say the high, oops, hypotenuse is, let me take this away, I'm going to say, let's put this in parentheses because it's a variable and we'll close that and close the quotation marks. So now we're going to say the hypotenuse is, it'll call the function, it will pass in 3 and 4 and we'll do the math that we need and give me the answer as a full complete sentence. And as soon as that goes away, the hypotenuse is 5.0. Great. So now let's do something else we can, we can try with this. We can do some if statements as well. We can do some conditionals. If calculate hypotenuse where we pass in 1.2 and 2.3 is equal to, let's say, greater than or equal to 5.0, we'll print that's bigger than 5. And if it's not bigger than 5, We'll print, that's not bigger than 5. Did I type something wrong up there? Um, let's see, calcu, I spelled it wrong, calculate hype. So we can also call that function, we can call this calculate hype function in a conditional. So we're going to say, all right, let's go calculate the hypotenuse with these two numbers, and whatever is spit out is the hypotenuse. So if that's whatever was spit out, so if the hypotenuse is greater than 5, we say so. So let's try. So the first one will still be there, be 5.0, and then that's not bigger than 5. So the square root of 1.2 squared plus 2.3 squared is not greater than 5. Awesome. There we go.